Here we have an example where we're trying to prove that two lines will be parallel or make them parallel is another way that I like to think of it. Uh, because it tells us to find x so m, line m, is parallel to line n. Now I look at this and you go, well they don't even look parallel. You're right, because I, I think of it this way as right now they're not parallel, but I want them to become parallel. First thing I do is I look at the two angles I'm working with. I have this angle here and this angle here. And I notice that they're both on the inside of the two lines and they're on one side of the transversal. I think of them as the same side interior angles. Another way to think of them is consecutive interior angles. Well, what needs to happen with those two angles for the lines to be parallel? They need to be supplementary. Because I think back to the, the theorem that I had right here that said at the very bottom in purple, it says if consecutive interior angles are supplementary, then the lines are parallel. Come over here. Let's make those two angles become supplementary. Take this one. Let's add on this one, and if I want to make them supplementary, have it equal 180 degrees. Now it's a matter of solving an equation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 27 from both sides of my equation, because 25 plus 2 is 27. When I do that, I end up with 9x on the left side and 153 on the right side. Divide both sides by 9. And I find out that x equals 17. If, my, if I plug x back into these two equations and find the measure of each one of them, I'll find that the sum of those two measures will be 180 degrees. Therefore, I've solved my problem. I found the value of x that will make these two lines parallel. In my next example, you have a picture here, and it gives you the measure of three angles. And I want to know which of these lines are parallel. Now, to really do this, you can only look at two lines and one transversal at a time. J is going to have to be the transversal each time. Well, then it's a matter of, well, I'm going to check to see if F and G are parallel. Totally ignore H for the time being. doesn't even exist. And I look at the two angles that I have. I ask myself, are these two angles same side interiors? Are they alternate interiors? Are they alternate exteriors? Are they corresponding angles? And I look at them and I go, they're none of those angle pairs. Therefore, I can't just say, well, because they're congruent, the lines have to be parallel. I may need to go another step farther. Let me find the measure of this angle right here. Well, I know that that 95 degree angle that's right above it and this one here are going to have to be supplementary. Therefore, the measure of this angle down here is going to have to be uh, 85 degrees. And now I can look at the 85 degree angle and this 95 degree angle. I look at those two, I know that they're corresponding angles. Well, if the lines are really going to be parallel, those corresponding angles have to be congruent. They're not congruent, therefore I know F and G are not parallel. So I can rule out F and G as being not parallel. I'm going to start over again. I'm going to look at two other lines. I still have line J as my transversal. Now I'm going to look at line G and line H and determine if these two lines are parallel or not. And again, I, I'm going to think back that I already figured out that this one's an 85 degree angle, and I have to, to go from there. I can look at this and this. Those are corresponding angles. They're not congruent. Therefore, my two lines are not going to be parallel. So I know that G and H are not parallel. I only have one more set to look at. I have my line J, and now i got to look at line F and line H, and totally ignore line G. Well, here, I see the 95 degree angle, I see the 95 degree angle. Those are corresponding angles this time, and if the corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. Therefore, I know that line F is going to be parallel to line H, and those are the only two that we've parallel based off that picture. And now we have another one that's very similar, trying to figure out which two lines, or maybe all three of them are parallel. And we're going to do it the same way. But this time, you have, might have to switch transversals. First, I'm going to look at line F and line G. And I have to figure out which one to let be the transversal. And I notice if I go with line K as the transversal, I know nothing about the angles 
here. Therefore, that's not a good pick for my transversal. Therefore, let's not use that one. Let's try and use line J as my transversal. And when I do that, I notice that I have the 60 degree angle up here. But now when I come down to where line G and line J intersect, I know I have a 63 degree angle here. Problem is I don't know this one, but I can find it. Because these three angles together are going to have to add up to be 180 degrees. So I'm going to take that 180 degrees and I'm going to essentially subtract the 63 and subtract the 60. And when I do that, I'm going to end up with a 57 degree angle, which is this one right here. Now I look at this and the 60 degree angle from here and the 57 degree angle from here are corresponding angles. Therefore, I know line F and line G are not parallel. So start all over again. Erase all this stuff. And now I can look at line G and line H and see if they're parallel. And I'm going to put this 57 degree angle back in here because it may be helpful to us. And again, I have to pick a transversal and pick the one that is going to work best for us. I picked this one because, again, I know the angle here. If I went up here, I know none of these. Therefore, line K would not be a good transversal to pick. All right, now, I'm going to use the fact that I have uh, alternate interior angles right here and here. And I notice that those alternate interior angles are not, uh, not congruent. Therefore, I know that line G and line H are not parallel. All right, I'm 0 for 2 again. So I have to see if I have another one that will help. So now the last two lines I have to look at will be line F and line H. And I have to pick a transversal. Pick this as my transversal. And again, I see alternate interior angles here and here. Those two are not congruent. Therefore, line F and line H are not parallel. I look at which lines are parallel. Well, I just figured out that none of them are. And sometimes that will happen where none of your lines will be parallel. But you have to check all those different combinations of the two to see which ones will be parallel. And that's going to sum up the example part of uh, proving lines being parallel.